to our assistant head nurse, uh, Sister Marietta Aman, to all church nurses, senior staff, and colleagues, a pleasant afternoon. We, the Internal Medicine Department, would like to present a case called progeria. Is it too old to be young or too young to be old? And they are what we call borrowed angels. The members are, are the presenters for the introduction, Ms. Fritzi Elman, for the anatomy and physiology, Ms. Nina Tagalogon, for the science and symptoms, Ms. Angelina Brere, for the proce diagnostic procedure, Ms. Caroline Nadiwan, for the nursing management, Katherine Villa Verde, and for the procedure, um, Mona Rose de la Cruz. Supervised by Ms. Rachel Atopubo, Ms. Naarni Ibeya, Ms. Julieta Gloria, and Ms. Mia Nilisma. Progeria. Progeria is a human disease model of accelerated aging. It is a rare yet least known genetic disorder that was discovered in 1886 by Hutchinson and Clifford in England. It has two types. The difference between the two is the age groups that it affects. The first type is the hutchinson Gilford progeria syndrome or the childhood progeria. The second type is the Werner syndrome or the adult progeria. What basically happens in this disorder is that the age accelerates seven times faster than a normal person. For hutchinson Gilford syndrome, a child may look like 50 when he is actually 5 years old. For Werner syndrome, a child uh, adult may look like 60 or 70 when he is actually 20 years old. There are several features of premature aging, and this includes growth retardation, loss of hair and subcutaneous spots, restricted joint mobility, prominent eyes, and premature atherosclerosis. For the history, Jonathan Hutchinson discovered a first case of a three-year-old boy with an appearance of an old man. Later, Hastings Gilford discovered a second case with a similar features. Progeria came from a Greek word giras, which means old age. 
For the epidemiology, one out of eight million people will get this disease. For every one year that a child lives with progeria, it is equivalent of what, 10 years living for a normal person. Progeria affects both boys and girls equally, and it is found in almost continents today. Having a prominent eyes, a thin nose with a big like appearance, a smaller chin, and protruding ears are the common attributes of a child diagnosed with progeria. There are about 80 known cases of progeria worldwide right now. Although progeria is a genetic disorder, it is not usually passed down to families. Only one out of 400 million people will get this disease. A progeria is considered as autosomal dominant condition. The number of cases of progeria since it was discovered in 1886 is around 250. The research about progeria is difficult because there are only 193 cells and tissues bound for the scientists to study. It is 100% fatal. Because of the rarity of the disease, progeria did not even begin since 1990s. A genetic test for Hutchinson's progeria is currently available. Researchers examined over 600 centenarians or people who are at least 100 years old to see if there's something in their genes that can promote life longevity. No family who had two children with the same biological parents that are diagnosed with progeria. The first sign of progeria is scleroderma or skin condition that indicates incapacity to drive. Progeria does not affect the mental and modern development of a child. The usual test for this condition is a genetic test for, to verify the element A mutation which affirms the condition. For the anatomy and pathophysiology, may I call on the new For the anatomy, here is a cell, the basic unit of a living tissue. In most human cells, there is a structure called the nucleus. The nucleus contains the genome. In humans, the genome is split between 23 pairs of chromosomes. Each chromosome contains a long strand of DNA tightly packaged around protein called histones. Within the DNA, all sections called genes. This genes contains instruction for making proteins. When a gene is switched on, an enzyme called RNA polymerase attaches to the start of the gene. It moves along the DNA making a strand of messenger RNA out of free bases in the nucleus. The DNA code determines the order in which the free bases are added to the messenger RNA. This process is called transcription. Before the messenger RNA can be used as a template for the production of protein, it needs to be processed. This involves removing, in adding sections of RNA. The messenger RNA it moves out with the nucleus into the cytoplasm. Protein factories in the cytoplasm called ribosome binds to the messenger RNA. The ribosome meets the code of the messenger RNA to produce a chain made up of amino acids. There are 20 different types of amino acids. It transfer RNA molecules carry the amino acid to the ribosome. The messenger RNA is read three bases at a time. As each treatment is read, it transfer RNA to livers responding to amino acid. This is added to a growing chain of amino acids. Once the last amino acid has been added, the chain folds into a complex shape shape to form a protein. For the pathophysiology, progeria is caused by mutation in protein known as lamin A. 
This as a scaffolding the either side of sun nucleus, which results in the shape of sun nucleus. Progeria is currently hypothesized as a result of gene mutation arising at the time of conception or shortly thereafter. The mechanism by which the shape of nucleus leads to accelerated aging symptoms is not currently known. Progeria is due to single letter of spelling of the gene and chromosome 1 that goes for lung A, a protein that a protein that is a key component of the membrane surrounding the cells not to use. So here's a picture of a normal cell and the cells of progeria. Apparently, you can see the difference between them. That is the normal shape of the nucleus, and that is the abnormal nuclear envelope. So these are the steps happening in the normal cell. The gene lambing A goes to a protein called pre A. pre A is a parnasal group attached to its end. Parnasal group is removed from pre A. Normal form is called pre A. pre A is not anchored to the nuclear beam, and it leads to normal shape of the nucleus. While in cell with progeria, the gene lambing A goes to a protein called pre A. pre A is a parnasal group attached to its end. Parnasal group remains attached to the per to the prelangian A. Abnormal, abnormal form of prelangian A is called progerin. Progerin is anchored to the nuclear beam and it results into a normal shape nucleus. So there is an addition happening. And this is the path of physiology of accelerated aging and physiological aging. Hutchinson's view for progeria syndrome due to high level of progerin accumulation this will lead to nuclear structure abnormalities, delayed cytokinesis, clustering of nuclear pores, loss of peripheral intercommitin, impaired mitosis inside the cycle progression, ROS increase, dysregulated mitochondrial function, dysregulated photosome activity, daily damage and genome stability, and cell senescence. Then this will lead to cardiovascular alterations, such as premature arteriosclerosis, vascular dysfunction, VS lipsid division, adventitial fibrosis, impaired coronary function, myocardial infarction, and stroke. For the physiological aging, due to low level of prelaminate accumulation, this will lead to nuclear structural abnormalities, thickening of nuclear lamina, clustering of nuclear, nuclear pores, loss of peripheral endocomitin, impaired mitosis, oxidative damage, test no modifications, then a damage in general stability, and cell senescence. Then this leads to cardiovascular alterations, such as vascular dysfunction, atherosclerosis, arteriosclerosis, myocardial infarction, and stroke. Both of these will lead to death. And now for the signs and symptoms, we call them Ms. Angelina Brand. Signs and symptoms of progeria. Usually within the first year of life, growth of a child with progeria slows markedly, but motor development and intelligence remain normal. Signs and symptoms of this progressive disorder include a distinctive appearance, slow growth with below average height and weight, narrowed face, small lower jaw, thin lips, big nose, head disproportionately large for face. Prominent eyes and incomplete closure of the eyelids. Hair loss, including eyelashes and eyebrows. Thinning, spotty, wrinkled skin. Visible veins, high pitch voice. Signs and symptoms also include health issues. Hardening and tightening of skin. Delayed and abnormal wood formation. Some hearing loss, loss of fat under the skin, and loss of muscle mass. Fragile bones, stiff joints, insulin resistance, severe progressive and heart of heart and blood vessel disease. Although they may come from varying ethnic backgrounds, children with progeria have a surprisingly similar appearance. Progeria patients generally die between the ages 8 and 21, and with the average age of only 13. And for the diagnostic test, may I call on Ms. Caroline Calibon. Diagnostic test for virtue. In the past, doctors said to 
based with diagnosis of Hutchinson Gilbert Progeria syndrome, also called HGPS solion physical symptoms, or when progeria features begin to be noticeable, such as skin changes and a failure to gain weight that were not fully apparent until a child first or second year of life. More rarely, the disorder may be suspected at birth based upon recognition of certain suspicious findings. Now, diagnosis is based upon true clinical evaluation, characteristic physical findings, a careful patient history, and a diagnostic genetic test which is currently available. A genetic test for LMN mutation can compare the diagnosis of progeria. Diagnosis may be established by the following. Characteristic clinical features, classical geriatric disorder of the young, thin high pitched voice, typical gait and box of valga, radiography of the skull, craniofacial disproportion, delayed and abnormal dentition, radiography of the hands, radiolucent terminal phalanges, urine test, excessive excretion of glycosamine amino -glyc and hyaluronic acid, culture of skin fibroblasts exhibited 76.1% DNA repair capacity compared with normal, genetic sporadic dominant mutation, arterial biopsy, premature atherosclerosis, and subhintimal fibrosis. For the clinical methods, we have confirmatory diagnostic testing, and prenatal diagnosis. Prenatal diagnosis for HGPS is possible by analysis of DNA extracted from fetal cells obtained by anesthetesis, usually performed at approximately 15 to 18 weeks gestation or chorionic yield sampling at approximately 10 to 12 weeks gestation. The disease causing allele of an affected family member must be identified before prenatal testing can be performed. Because HGPS has thus far not been reported for a part of the families, prenatal testing would only be performed because of the unlikely possibility of germline mosaicism in one of the parents. Gestational age is expressed as menstrual weeks calculated either from the first day of the last normal menstrual period of the family. Preimplantation genetic diagnosis may be available for families in which the disease causing mutation has been identified in an affected family member. For the nursing management, may it fall on this other in delivery. For medical care and nursing management. There's no cure for progeria, but regular monitoring of heart and blood vessels for cardiovascular diseases may help in managing the child's condition. Medications is only helpful in treating the associated symptoms like low dose aspirin. A daily dose may help prevent heart attack and strokes. Other medications, depending on the child's condition, the doctor may prescribe the use of histamine to lower down cholesterol or anticoagulant to prevent blood clots. The doctor may also discuss the option of using growth hormones to increase height and weight. On the other hand, certain therapies may help ease some signs and symptoms. This includes physical and occupational therapy. These therapies may help in managing your child these therapies may help with the joint stiffness and hip problems for the child to remain active. The use of hydrotherapy may be particularly effective for joint mobility and minimizing symptoms of arthritis. Furthermore, take time to consult and visit the dentist for the extraction of the primary teeth. The child's permanent teeth may start to come in before the baby primary teeth fall out. Pulling out some primary teeth may prevent overcrowding and encourage proper positioning of the permanent teeth. And for the lifestyle and home remedies, make sure that the child is stay well, well hydrated. Dehydration is more serious in children with progeria. See to it that the child drinks plenty of water, especially during illness or hot weather. Provide frequent small meals. Because nutrition is, and growth is an issue for children with progeria, giving your child smaller meals more often may increase calories intake. Infants with progeria may exhibit poor feeding. Provision of adequate nutrition intake may provide, may require placement of gastrostomy tube. In older children, a daily consumption of high energy supplement is recommended along with the provision, along with the careful monitoring of growth and nutrition. 
Provide opportunities for regular physical activities. Check with your child's doctor which activity is best for your child. Children in Nigeria do not require activity restrictions. But with adequate supervision, most children are able to experience a wide range of physical activities. Get fashion shoes or shoe inserts for your child because the loss of body fat in kids may cause discomfort. The use of sunscreen is also advised. Use a broad spectrum with at least SPF 15. Apply gentle on skin and reapply more often if the child is swimming or perspiring. Make sure that the child is up to date on childhood immunization. Children in progeria isn't at increased risk for infections, but like most children, is at risk if exposed to infectious diseases. Provide learning opportunities. Progeria won't affect our child's intellect, so he she can attend school and age appropriately. And for the coping mechanism and support system, Knowing that your child is progeria can be emotionally devastating. Suddenly you know that your child is facing a numerous difficult challenges and has a shorter lifespan. For the child and the family, coping with a disorder involves a major commitment of physical, emotional, and financial resources. Support groups can be a valuable part in coping mechanism. This includes healthcare professionals, family, and friends. Ask your doctor about self-help groups in your community. The Progeria Research Foundation will be able to help connect with the families coping with the disorder. And that's the end of our first presentation, Progeria. May I call on Ms. Monaros de la Cruz for the procedure. This procedure is not related to Progeria, but commonly done in our department. The urea breath test is test for diagnosing presence of a bacterium helicobacter pylori in the stomach. H. pylori causes inflammation, ulcers, and atrophy in the stomach. The case may also be used to demonstrate that H. pylori has been eliminated by treatment with antibiotics. Basis of this test. The urea breath test is the ability to break down H. pylori, a chemical made up of nitrogen and carbon, into carbon dioxide which then is absorbed from the stomach and eliminated in the breath. How is the breath test done? For the test, patient should swallow a capsule containing urea made from an isotope of carbon. Isotope of carbon occur in minuscule amount in nature and can be measured with a special testing machine. If H. pylori is present in the stomach, the urea is broken up and turned into carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide is absorbed across the lining of the stomach and up into the blood. It then travels in the blood to the lungs where it is excreted in the breath. Samples of exhaled breath are collected and the isotopic carbon and the exhaled carbon dioxide is measured. How are the results of the urea breath test interpreted? If the isotope is detected in the breath, it means that H. pylori is present in the stomach. If H. pylori is not found, isotope is not present. When the H. pylori is effectively treated, eradicated by treatment with antibiotics, the test ranges from positive to negative. How to prepare for the urea breath test? For optimal preparation, fast for at least four hours. This means that you consume no food and drink only water prior to the test. Penalty that the nourishing patient should avoid the test because active ingredient is aspartame mixed with 84 mg penilalanine unit per dosage. Avoid cotton pump inhibitors, antibiotics, and this new preparation within two weeks prior to the test. Do not do the test before four weeks after H. pylori treatment. What you can take before the test? Patients may take H2 antagonists such as Tagamet, Santac, or Antacids. 
most common bread collection errors. Not recapping the bread collection bug properly. Administration of pranactic citric solution before collecting the baseline bread sample. Consumption of food, beverages, or smoking during the 15-minute bread collection interval. Potential complications such as anaphylactic reaction, hypersensitivity, rash, burning sensation in the stomach, tingling sensation in the skin, vomiting, and diarrhea. And we will show you a video of UBT done in our department. The materials needed are gloves, water, 14C urea capsule, urea bread card, and urea bread test analyzer. First is to identify the patient correctly using three full names and medical record number. The code procedure is MIN 0685. The nurse will ask the patient his um, first name, second, and last name. <coughs> the nurse will explain the procedure to the patient very well.
Thank you.